Well, hello and welcome to a uh, new season on the lake. My name is Nigel, also known as the Lake Erie Vlogger. And on today's video, I am riding out to Port Coburn from Crystal Beach, which is just behind me. And two videos I'm doing here, basically. Sea Do Adventure for 2024. And also, at the same time, I'm chasing ships for another video I'm doing, because there is a few ships in Port Coburn. And there's also one coming out of uh, Buffalo right now. And there's another thing to contend with, weather. Uh, right now, it is glorious down here, 17 degrees Celsius. Um, open skies, it's blue, it's beautiful, but just to my west, there is some pop-up thunderstorms coming, which are just around the Long Point area, but the winds are meant to remain light all day. That's why I chose today to get out. So uh, to let you know, I was out on the sea do a couple of weeks ago. I rode down to uh, Chippewa and back uh, with uh, Andrew, a guy just lived in the area to check the CD, make sure it was all running. Didn't make the video because we've been there before, right? So, uh, and we've been to Port Coburn, but it's about time I did a video. Uh, this season's gonna be different. I'm not gonna be doing as many videos on the sea -Doo. Uh Instead, I'm gonna be doing big adventures on the sea -Doo, which means I'm gonna be away for the whole weekend, uh, doing adventure stuff, something completely different, except for today. So, uh, let's head on up to Port Coburn so we can see, and uh, this will be the short version. Oh, look at that. Looks like there's a ski ramp right over there. I don't know if you can see that after zoom in. Just But with the with the warm and cold air, you're getting that inversion, that, that that kind of effect where it looks like the ground is lifting up. And I'm seeing that right now. It's like the lake's got a bubble on it. <laughs> so yeah, this is that kind of weather where you'll see ships being lifted out of the sky most likely. Uh, especially to our west, uh, southwest I should say. Uh, to my north, actually, yeah, even all around me. Look at Shirkston. Fata Magana, is that, that's what they call that. That's when you get that uh, optical illusion where things are being lifted out of the water or the horizon's lifted up. So that's what's over there. Anyway, less of the talking, let's get cracking and let's move on to Port Coburn. Shirkston. I just want to show you something. Uh, when I was here two weeks ago, um, something caught my eye. It's caught my eye several times actually, but I want to make you aware of it in case you come down here uh, this spring or summer and the dangers of this shipwreck here. I did a video on this uh, shipwreck, so I'll put the link in the description somewhere about here so you can check it out. Uh, this is Venus. Uh, but anyway, I just want to show you something. It's a hidden danger, and if you don't know where it is, you're seriously going to have a problem. Um, and I'll tell you why when I find it. Okay, I think it's somewhere here. I don't want to hit it. Right, just got to find it. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, here it is. There. Unfortunately, it's a bit ripply. Maybe on, there it is. Okay, that is the prop shaft of this shipwreck. Now, the problem is, uh, the last few years, the water levels have been quite high on Lake Erie. 
uh, but they've been gradually lowering. Uh, they're still not at their average, but from what we've been used to for the last 10 years, the water levels are now getting quite low, but we're still quite a bit above uh, what would be classed as normal. But this prop is now only about a foot away from the surface. So if you're riding along here in a boat, doing some fishing or a, a jet ski, sea do, and especially if there's a bit of a, uh, a wave, uh, you're gonna slam right on top of this prop. I'm just gonna show you again. Just so you know, you have gotta be really careful here. All right, what I'm gonna do right now is show you some footage I got from about two years ago on a very still day out here, and it will give you a good close-up of the ship. So this is the shipwreck of Venus on a very clear day. Look how, that's just magnificent. Now, most of the time, you don't see it like that, but look here, top of the picture, that is the prop shaft right there. So if we just zoom in onto this, this prop shaft. All right, so there you have it. There's a prop shaft, which is quite long. It's probably about 18 feet long. Uh, the propeller itself is probably got to be close to, I would say, about seven feet. Uh, it's probably two and a half feet each propeller, maybe three. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that is literally, as you can tell from this picture, is just inches away from the top of the water. And if you're coming over here with a boat or a sea dew or anything like that, you're going to hit that and you're going to hit it hard. And I'm surprised that this, this hasn't been marked out on the lake as a warning anywhere. There's no flag, no boy or anything to warn anybody. So just be careful. That is really, really dangerous if you come flying along here, which some people do, and you're going to be met with a terrible disaster. So yeah, but that's at Shirkston. So it is on the uh, southwest side of the shipwreck. So it's about oh, 30 meters, 30 meters from the bulk of it to there. So just be very careful if you come along here. I just want to give you that bit of advice. All right, let's carry on to Port Coburn, which is just ahead of me. Well, if I suck something up, I'm not getting any power here. Definitely doesn't sound good. All right. I have to do an IDF. I don't see anything. Press start. All right. Fly throttle. Hope that cleared it out. Ready to start. Yep, I must have sucked something up. Oh, God knows what it was. <laughs> but we're away again. I love the IDF. The IDF is brilliant. by submarine cable 900 west only that means something in particular and just over there is sugarloaf mill and also the marina where you can launch from the public launch i launched from there the other day uh, sorry last week i just want to let you know it's expensive um 
It used to be fifteen dollars, and I think my my charge showed fifty uh, twenty two sixty, if I'm not mistaken. So twenty two sixty to launch. So things are really going up. Crystal Beach, I believe, is still fifteen dollars, unless you get a pass. It's hundred and twenty five for the year. is the Algoma Transport. Uh, this ship is here for scrapping. It came in uh, in January of this year. Uh, I've got a really good video of that actually when it came in. It actually it came on, on its own power backwards <laughs> into the harbour. It was uh, it was a really nice but also a sad sight knowing it was its end of its uh, days. But a beautiful ship uh, but unfortunately uh, a lot of corrosion and it's, uh, it's too expensive to repair so they're scrapping it. Algoma Transport. So sad. Right, I'm gonna try and get under the ship a little bit here. Underneath the Algoma Transport. It's cool. And here next to me right now, Sunavik. Sunanavik. Sunanavik. Saw this coming in the other day, uh, the other end of the Welland Canal. It's been to Buffalo and now it's heading back into uh, Quebec. Nice little ship. I'll be doing a featured video on these ships for my uh, other playlist, which is Ships on the Great Lakes. So for the uh, CDU channel, we're just doing a quick look at these ships. Now the ship that really caught my eye was the CL CSL Welland, which has a lovely paint scheme on it. Wait till you see this. Now the paint scheme is commemorating the 2022 um, Niagara, well yeah, the Canadian Games which were held here in Niagara. And to finish it off we have a beautiful old ship, Frontenac from Montreal, part of the same company, CSL, and this is one of those older ones where the bridge is at the front of the ship. And of course, this is Port Coburn. Uh, this is ADM milling, and these mills are over a hundred years old. Uh, been a vital part of uh, Port Coburn's community uh, for literally over a century uh, dealing with grains, wheat, whatever whatever they're bringing and transport in and out uh, I was just here the other week and the, the Blair McKeel uh, was loading uh, some form of wheat I believe it was uh, just from the mill just over there 
So I was I wanted to get the drone up, but unfortunately there's so many birds here because it's it's nesting season, so it's just not worth it. So a certain somebody I know lost a drone the other day. <laughs> no names mentioned. So um, early season casualty, one drone down for the year. So I feel like I jinxed myself in last week's video where I was like, oh, this is the best drone. I've never had any issues with it. And then look at that. Now this part is not in use anymore, uh, this docking area. I would have thought years and years ago you probably got ships in there, but it's all been uh, Jersey barriered off and it's been changed on this side. But I can imagine years and years ago something would have gone in there, but on this other side you can clearly see where the ships still go and I'll show you a video of the, uh, the keel I caught here just the other week uh, loading, which is pretty cool. But all the gulls are here. I got, I got, I got, I got. Yeah, and around the corner, I'm sure it's going to be a, a, a ton load of geese. So you can see from this side, the tires are still out, so where the ships will pull up alongside. And the, uh, the hose is there, which will come down into the... Uh, the, the, the uh, open part of the ship and load its content. And Sugarloaf Marina, which is here, and the public launch is just around the corner. All right, so there you have it. It's just a short trip to Port Coburn to see a few ships. Uh, I'll be back out very soon. Um, I've got a couple of big rides planned this summer, but I don't know exactly when. It all depends on the weather. And I'll be teaming up with Mark, Mark Forrest. And uh, we're hitting the road and taking our CDs with us. So uh, keep an eye out for us. We will be out on the water. Until I see you out there, stay safe. See you all soon.